everyone, Rackle Flackle here. Welcome to the second video in my series on vid making. This vid will benefit not only RuneScape vid makers, but anyone trying to figure out how to edit and add sounds to their videos. Now, if you caught my last vid on vid making, you know that I only use free software. So the editor I'm going to focus on is Windows Movie Maker because it comes free with Windows Vista and Windows XP. Movie Maker will not be available in Windows 7, but it will be replaced with Windows Live Movie Maker, which I don't have access to at the time this vid's being made. There are other editors out there, and I'll touch on them briefly, but for now, let's talk about using Windows Movie Maker. You'll find Movie Maker in your program files. If you have the Windows XP operating system, you may want to seek out the Windows Movie Maker 2.5 download if you don't have it already, as it's the most recent version for XP. Version 2.6 is for Vista, but you should only download it if your current version doesn't work. Now that you have the software, let's take a look at it. Here's a screenshot of the interface in Vista, and here's the way it looks in XP. Let's look at the toolbar on the Vista edition. XP edition has similar functions. First, you'll see the file menu, with important options to let you open and save projects, as well as import media items. The Edit menu has the standard Cut, Copy, Paste, and Undo options. The View menu should be viewed, as it has one of the most important options for editing, the Storyboard and Timeline options. For editing, I recommend using the Timeline option and setting your vid clips as thumbnails to make them easier to identify visually. The Tools menu is also quite important, as it will allow you to add titles, credits, and effects to your video. Clip menu has the keyboard shortcuts for adding things to the timeline and such, but most of this can be done through the drag and drop method with your mouse. One important thing on the clips menu, though, allows you to fade in and out sound, music, and video on things you add to Movie Maker. Play has the keyboard shortcuts for play options, unnecessary unless you can't point and click, and help is, of course, for help. Now that we've looked at the toolbar, let's jump into putting a movie together. The first thing to do is import your video file into Movie Maker. You can do this from the File menu or on Vista use the handy Import Media button, or Control i if you use keyboard shortcuts. Then locate where the clip is you want to import, select it, then click the Import button. This will make the clip appear in your collection. Then it's just a simple matter of dragging the clip into your timeline or hitting Control d with the clip selected. Now for the most basic and important editing tool in any editing program. The Cutting Tool. That's this thing located in the lower right-hand corner of the viewing pane, right next to the buttons to go to the previous frame, play, and next frame. It looks like this in XP. Other editing programs than Movie Maker will have something similar, and it's a vidmaker's best friend. This is the tool you use to cut out things that you don't want in your video, like spaces between when you say your lines, or to edit out typos and unplanned elements such as NPCs. You can also use it for some special effects, such as turning Chicken Man here into a dead chicken. Shazam! I did that just by having him drop a chicken and walk off, and then edited out the parts in between. I cut the film here, used the forward button until I got here, and then removed the middle. Pretty simple. Using this technique, you can cut emotes off in the middle to produce certain movements you want, suddenly change backgrounds, or make yourself float around. Other effects like rippling, blurring, or fading can be found in the Effects menu. More advanced effects like the one in Aerogun 99's Machinima Entry, in which objects that don't ordinarily move around get thrown about, are done with masking effects, which can't be done in Movie Maker. You would need to purchase an editing program such as Sony Vegas to do that, and such programs can be pricey. There are lots of tutorials out there that describe the techniques used for masking, and I won't touch any more on that in this video but I will conclude this series with a vid on content and effects that explain that sort of thing further and how to do other simple effects. The only other basic vid making tip is for adding titles. This of course is done from the tools menu. You can change styles and fonts and background colors and even make titles that appear over top your vid clips. Most of this sort of thing you can figure out on your own just by playing around with the features. Make a few test vids to see how everything fits together. That's pretty much it for basic editing. Now, on to sounds and voices. To record voices first off, the one thing you might need if you don't have a laptop with a built-in mic is... A cheap microphone! 
don't spend a lot of money on one of these. I've usually found that the cheaper ones work better for basic voiceovers. The next necessary thing is a sound recording program. Even though Windows comes with something called Sound Recorder, I don't recommend this program. Instead, download either Audacity or WavePad, which are free programs. They can be downloaded at these addresses. I myself use Audacity, so I'll focus on it, but I'm sure WavePad has similar features, and as always, there are other programs out there as well, some free, some not. Just search around for one if you can't get the other two to work for you. Like Movie Maker, the best way to learn to use these programs is by playing around with them. Once you've played with the program and figured out how to record your own voice, the next step to doing a good voiceover is to have a script. If you didn't write down what you already said when you recorded your video, I recommend watching your recording and writing down the words now so you can do the voiceover. I always use the Notepad program that comes with Windows to write my scripts because it's handy to be able to resize the window so you can put it next to the game when you record the video portion, then you can resize it to fit under your audio program as well. When you're doing your voice work, try to speak at a normal pace. Don't try to watch your vid and match the words with the pace of what you recorded. I'll show you how to sync in a moment or so. Once you've recorded what you want, just export it as a .wav file, giving it a title you can recognize easily, and put it into a file location you can easily find. Next, you can import it into Movie Maker the same way you did your video clips. Movie Maker will also import .mp3 files, so you can import songs and music recorded in this format as well for making music videos. Syncing the spoken word with any written words on the screen is a lot easier than you'd think. Simply listen to what you've said as you're watching the vid, hit the pause button when you reach the last word typed on the screen, then cut the vid up, advance to the next part where you're speaking, and cut again, and remove the excess space in the middle. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it. Some people who have used Movie Maker in the past may be wondering why I didn't mention that there is a place in the program where you can record a voiceover without using a second party program, so I'll give that a quick go over. I would only use this feature for doing a voiceover of something like a school project or vacation video if needed. The reason being that if you're doing machinima, you can add effects with programs like Audacity, such as changing the pitch of your voice up to make it sound squeaky or down to make it sound demonic. Plus, you can add music tracks and sound effects and control how loud or quiet they are in comparison to your voice. And I can't forget the background noise removing feature either. I always use it to remove sounds like air conditioners, heaters, and my snoring dog. Wow, look at the time. Gotta hurry this up. The final tip I have is on getting sound effects. To find sound effects, simply search for Free sound effects, followed by whatever sound you're looking for. If you want sound effects from the game, I recommend downloading a neat little tool called Ask and Record Toolbar, which will put another search bar on your browser, but also enables those of you who don't have sound cards separate from your motherboard to get sound effects from anything that plays through your speakers. I mention this because a lot of third-party sound capture software requires a separate sound card, but this one doesn't, and it exports files in an MP3 format. So, if you were a total RS geek, you could record the game music and play it on your MP3 player. By the way, I don't do that. Once you have everything strung together, just click on the Publish Movie task in the File menu and publish the movie to your computer. I use the DVD quality option. Well, that's all the time I have for in this vid, but that should give all you fellow vid noobs like me out there the basics you need to make your own quality vids. If you're a higher level vid noob and want to share some tips, just put them in the comments with the word tip capitalized so everyone can see them better. Join me again in my final bit in the series, where I go a little more into detail on special effects and give you some tips on getting ideas and what kind of content makes for a cool bit. Till then, catch you later!